Well, I just couldn't help it. I know I ain't supposed to be planting onions until November, but I just couldn't help myself. And I had some plants that needed to go in the ground. So I planted some. We had a video come out yesterday on that planting onions in October, which I've never done before. And you jumped the gun a little bit yourself, didn't you? I did, but I think I'm gonna be okay. I planted my nest onions, I, I seeded some bunch of onions, I planted my elephant garden, and I planted my shallots. But I think I'll be okay there. I'm gonna hold off on my sweet onion sets for just a little bit to the first of November. We've gotten we've gotten a good bit cooler than we was a couple weeks ago. Matter of fact, I was in the garden early this morning. And it was cool up there. And I got to looking around thinking, you know, I'm behind. I ain't got, my cover crops is not in like they should be. I got mustards coming up in one plot, but I need to get some daikon radishes planted. I need to get some Australian winter peas planted. I'm running a little bit behind and it just hit me this morning. I was up there and it was like, boom, Greg, you behind, bud. You got to tighten up. Got to tighten up. So I'm probably going to have to work late tonight or tomorrow and uh, get it all straightened out. I'm gonna have to get up there and somebody hold a lot for me. Put in some overtime. Yeah, <clears throat> I got I got a headlamp. I get out there in the dark at this time of year, especially once the time changes. Yeah. It gets dark at six o'clock. I still got an hour or two worth of work to do. Anyway, let's say hey to everyone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Road by Row Garden Show. I'm Travis. I'm Greg. And this is our weekly garden show where we talk shop. <coughs> we talk a little garden. What's going on around here? If this is your first time joining us. Uh, we just welcome you to the channel, welcome you to the show. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. We welcome our frequent viewers. It's always good to have them back here with us. Um, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about short handle tools or yep. raised bed tools. Uh, from our last show we did, um, we knew we had a lot of customers at Gardening Raised Beds, but we have... A lot more than we thought and so we want to go over some of our really good high quality American made tools for you raised bed gardeners mm -hmm. out there but before we do that we always have a little show and tell we talked about our onions a little bit uh, getting those alliums in the ground um, and and when my video came out I haven't got to work through all the comments yet but a lot of people are saying you're not getting plants you're doing them all from seed well I'm actually kind of doing a trial. I'm gonna compare them there. So I got a lot of plants I grew from seed. I just talked to my buddy Brian at Dixondale yesterday and uh, got some plants ordered from them. And uh, we're gonna do them side by side and kind of see see what happens there. If you don't have your onion dirt ready, it's now's the time to be getting it ready. Get uh, your seed bed prepared. So when those onions come in, they need to be planted immediately. And uh, <clears throat> Brian said, of course, they were dealing with, like much of us in the entire country, were dealing with some late summer extreme heat. They lost their entire first crop of onion plants that they planted, but um, they hope to be shipping early November. So if yep. you want onions early, you got to let them know that you want them earlier, but uh, you should be able to get them in time to get them in November. Since we've gotten this cool weather, our lettuce has really took off from growing. And lettuce is one of the easiest crops for me to grow. Mm -hmm. I do a great job. For some reason, though, that insects that bother my other stuff do not like lettuce. I know everybody has different problems and different reasons, but I don't have any problems with, with insects on lettuce. So I, I don't hardly have to spray lettuce at all. We do a great job growing lettuce. Uh, I got several different varieties. It grows quick uh, <clears throat> and is really a great thing to have so you can go out and pick some and do a salad. Now, let's touch on cow shot lettuces just a minute. So that's one of my favorite lettuces that I grew. I got growing now. We've had some problems with this cow shot. Mm -hmm. We sent out some seed to some people because they was complaining about the germination. Back during late summer, we had some people complaining. I went up there and did a test tray, and I had the same problem everybody else did. I had poor germination. So we come back and we pulled this cow shot off our shelves, and we sent it off for another germination test because we thought we had some issues. The germination test come back fine. Mm -hmm. Blowed my mind. Here I was scratching my head, didn't know what to do. So I called the seed lab and I got a hold of the seed lab manager and I talked to him. And he said, Sometimes you have a lettuce variety that doesn't like to germinate in the hotter weather. Mm -hmm. Now I seeded some other lettuces and, and had, they had, didn't have any problems. So he said, Do some testing with different temperature zones and see what happens. And I did that. And I found out something. This cow shot lettuce is very peculiar about its temperature when it's in that germination stage. It will not germinate in high temperatures, late summer. 
Yeah. It loves to germinate anywhere from about 68 degrees to about 78 degrees. There's a window there where it'll germinate fine. And I did some tests and I got it in that window there and I got right out 100% germination. But if you go down on the bottom end or that, or you go hot, you will get poor germination. So if you're growing cow shot and you're a big fan of it as I am, just understand it is one of those varieties that is very sensitive to the temperature on the germination. So you have to wait a little longer to, to start yeah, that. To if, you, if you're itching mm. or late summer to get some of the ground, go with the, and you want a red lettuce, that Cherokee. Mm -hmm. I've done some experimentation with that. It'll germ fine in that hot soil or dirt, whatever you well, want. Well, actually, I had seen some of this cow shot and gave up on it. And I've just left the tray out there. And as soon as the weather triggered down in that zone, I looked at it one day and my cow shot was coming up. It just sat there until it got the right temperature and came up. So just thought I'd pass that along to people out there that have ordered cow shot or that want to order cow shot. In general, you don't need to be planting lettuce in no 95 degree and 100 degree weather like we had about four or five weeks ago. We did that, and I got I had decent luck with it, but that's not an ideal way to grow lettuce. You got to baby it. It takes a yeah. lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort. We've had a lot of people speaking of growing transplants. A lot of people asking about uh, the trays. We mentioned several weeks ago that we've got some bottom trays for our big seed starting trays coming, and uh, that we were also getting some smaller cell versions of the big nice seed starting trays. A few updates there. The bottom trays are on a boat somewhere. Uh, between here and there. Between here and across the pond. So uh, I, I imagine in a few weeks or so, we hope to have those. Uh, as far as the the small cell trays go, we had mentioned that we were thinking about going with a 288, but we talked to the, the company that makes them for us and they recommended a 338. And uh, we got a sample and really like the looks of it. Uh, it's the same depth, it's just got 330, 338 cells as opposed to 162. You're actually trying those right now, trying those. So yeah, uh, I've grown <clears throat> onions in the 288, so work really good. Um, the the rep uh, was saying that a lot of people are growing cabbage in these uh, 338, so I've got some rutabagas in some, I'm going to try that. And um, we should be placing an order for those probably between now and the end of the year or so and uh, we should have them by spring. Uh, I will mention this about the 338s. I don't like to discourage anybody from doing anything but I wouldn't if you've never grown your own transplants before I wouldn't recommend trying the 338s. They're um, because there's less dirt per cell it takes a little more frequent watering it's going to take a little more experience. It takes experience grower for those. Yeah. yeah. If you're agree. good, if you're you grow good transplants and then 162s, give them 338s a try. But if it's your first time ever growing transplants, I don't know that I would recommend the 338s because it, it does take a little more um, caretaking. Finesse. Finesse. Yeah. Good word. A few other things. Uh, get that plant right there. So a fellow that that watches and comments on our video frequently, his name <clears> is. W.L. Kaplinger, and uh, I don't know where he works, but I believe in a previous life he might have worked at the post office because he packed these trees, or the, whatever these are, mighty fine. So yeah. he sent us these plants here, and my suspicion is that they may be elderberry because we talked about that on the show, but I ain't got a clue what they are. So W.L., please let us know what they are. And, um, and what we, we need to do, as soon as they came in, I went up there and potted them up and put them in the greenhouse. We potted show them, pick it up there. They we potted them there. up, and uh, we can put them outside in the ground somewhere. We don't know what to do with them quite yet. So if anybody knows what these are, or if WL, you're out there, let us know what they are and give us some tips on what to do with them, and we appreciate it. Yep. The last thing there, speaking of plants, I got me a, on the far side of my dream garden, I got me about a 50 foot long strip that's about five foot wide. I used my tarp to kill the grass and I just got tilled up. Go plant me some more thornless blackberries there. But I need some help from our viewers because there's about four varieties out there. And if you go on Isom's website, they make them all sound good, obviously. There's an Apache, there's an Arapaho, there's a Natchez, and there's a Navajo. You reckon they're all Indian names? You know they're that? all Indian names, yep. Now we've got a variety, we don't really know which one it is that we've been growing it's for several years. It's one of those four. But if any of you out there have have grown 
different thornless blackberry varieties and have some recommendations which ones are sweeter which ones taste better which one grow i kind of want an upright growth i don't want one that trailing vining on the ground i want one that grows more upright bushy so any of you that have any recommendations on those let me know because i'm going to be ordering some soon planting around december or so which is the ideal time for us all right last thing before we get into our tools for raised bed we last week we um Let's pick these up here. I got that one that's hung up in there. So we showed these tools right here, which we were gonna give away to one of our viewers. And these are made in the USA, nice little small hand tools here. And uh, we had lots and lots of good comments uh, on these. And I didn't put the names in the hat. Well, honestly, what I did was I closed my eyes and I just flipped my mouse up and down and wherever it landed, it landed and it landed uh, on this lady named Barbara Martin and she was she had a little story there in her comments and uh, says she just she's 64 I think her husband's around that age they just retired to South Carolina finally got a backyard big enough to garden in and they're going to start them a vegetable garden so Barbara if you'll send us an email to cussserve at hosstools.com We'll be glad to send these to you, and we really hope you enjoy them. Yeah, and a little side note, we're going to be carrying these two right here, along with the hodag, which is one we already carry. So we're going to be carrying these right here in the next few weeks, Yeah, if you're interested in them. We'll, we'll have them in a little bundle, yep. so you can get them just like this right here. Because a lot of people, we did have quite a few commenters that said, hey, I, I've got the means to, to buy the tools. I don't need the giveaway, but I really like them. Can you show me where I can get them? Yep. So uh we will start carrying within these. the next two or three weeks we should have them up okay speaking <coughs> of short handle tools we want to go through <coughs> y'all right yeah i'm facing some allergy problems struggling we're gonna work through we're gonna go through real quick some of our short handle tools that we like to use and even if you don't have a raised bed garden i find myself using some of these short handle tools often too whether i'm kneeling down or bending over sometimes you need something with a little more precision to get real close to them plants yep. so Let's go through them real quick. The first one here, and we have this long handle as well, but this is what we call our short single tine cultivator. And if you grow onions, this is the ideal. Onions, garlic, anything like that. I, onions and garlic and shallots would be my, this is my go-to right here. That, that thing right there, it, it doesn't look really fancy or sophisticated, but you can do more with that than you will ever, ever Yeah, imagine. here's the key. You can put it down there if you need to dig out some right around the edge here. It's got that point. It'll go down pretty deep. But then if I'm in between on my drip tape, I turn it sideways, and I can just rake across there, and I can rake off in weeds and not get too deep and get my drip tape. And if you've got you a little, if you got a raised bed and you want to plant you some like of our premium greens mix and some or some baby leaf lettuce mix, this is a perfect tool for making them little mini furrows and you can put you know nine or ten of them side by side put your seed in there rake them in great little multi-use tool there the next ones the next five we're going to get into are some ones that we have a blacksmith in missouri that makes for us so he's a fourth generation blacksmith he's a fellow you don't want to arm wrestle with oh wheel and um make some really good tools now this one here We've shown it before, and you might have seen this one on some other channels out there. There's quite a few people out there using this. This is the best garden trowel in existence, and I'm not lying. Um, you really have to handle this, baby, before you can fully appreciate it. Sharp. Sharp. It's high carbon steel. Will does a wonderful job of beating these things out. It's nice, and they're consistent. And it's, it also operates as a little shovel, so if you're moving some pot and soil, Ain't no problem in picking there and move it around. You can dig up a weed with it. Dig up a weed with it. A wonderful little tool there. Yeah. And all these these tools here, uh, these next five yeah. we'll go through, we offer a lifetime warranty on these. So if you ever break them, something ever happens to them, uh, just let us know and we'll be glad to send you a new one. All these tools, especially like this garden trail here, make excellent, excellent gifts. And, and the holiday season's coming up. And uh, if you've got a gardener on your shopping list, these things right here, I guarantee you, will make yeah, you happy. Yeah, if you appreciate a good tool, that'll, that'll get you going there. Now, if you don't take care of your coat tools and you like to leave them outside and you don't care about quality, go to Walmart and buy your tools. But if you're gonna take care of them and you appreciate quality, 
these right here is going to do something for you. Here's another one that the blacksmith makes for us. We call this the crow foot cultivator, and this is a nice one to kind of scratch up, get your dirt prepared for planting. Uh, just do some light cultivation with it, and uh, this is just a beautiful tool, but it's also really, really handy. And it's yeah. got a nice little longer handle on it there. Good little back scratcher too. Good little back scratcher. Yeah. Head scratcher. Head scratcher. Everything else, but just mm. just a beautiful, beautiful tools. Uh, it, like you said, it's hard to appreciate them unless you see them in person, but we've never had anybody disappointed from nope. any of these. And every time we have somebody come through, I always carry them out there and show them a warehouse. Now, this is one of the first things I show them, and everybody's always blown away when they take a look at them and, and put their hands on them. Uh, we have a yeah. long handle version of this as well. This is the bat wing hoe. Okay, so we call this a small bat wing hoe. You can see the blade there is kind of shaped like the Batman symbol. And uh, this is a good little tool. You're going to pull some dirt up on some plants or you planted some seeds and you need to cover them up. A great little hand hoe for that there. And it's got a, it's got a nice solid handle on it. You're not going to bend or break that. Just a tough, tough tool, but also uh, very, very useful in the garden. The next one we've got, and you might have seen this design out there. This is what they call a Cape Cod weeder. So this design is out there. You can probably go buy a cheap version of this somewhere, but I guarantee you it won't be have a lifetime warranty on it. So the way this works is this blade here, which is sharp all the way around, sits flat on the soil and you kind of skim it back and forth across the soil and you can control the depth at which it digs there. And you can put this part up against your plant there. Let me see if I can, this part up against your plant there and weed real close to your plant without. You don't want to worry about plant. cutting it. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the Cape Cod. And then the last one here of these uh, hand welded and hand blacksmith tools, we have a long handle version of this as well. This is what we call our scuffle weeder. And if you got some real stubborn, grassy weeds, in your raised beds, this right here is the one to go to. If my hand was the soil, it scoots along there. It is sharp on all four sides. And same thing with the Cape Cod. You can control the depth there. If you need to dig a little deeper, you can do that. But this puppy here, I always tell people, be careful with this guy. It'll cut you. It'll cut you, but it'll do the job. Yep. All right. So that's all those. Let me say one word about all those. All those are made out of what we call consider sort of high carbon steel. All these they here. come, they come sharp. However, if you do need to sharpen them, you can sharpen this steel here. That's yeah, it's easy to sharpen. That is what's so great about it. Is the average person can resharpen these and keep them, uh, keep them. Heck, they're least. tools designed, built to last a lifetime. Yep. They, they meant to be taken care of, passed down to your kids and even their kids. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Got a few more I want to get into. Got this guy here. Digging tool. Which we use a lot. I use a lot. So you'll see a version of this online called a hoary hoary tool or something like that. And this is kind of a version like that. This one doesn't have a knife edge on it. You could sharpen that steel and create a knife edge, but uh, this is a great tool for transplanting. I like it because it's got this little shield on it right here, so you can really hammer down on it gives you some extra leverage so if you want to dig and break up some soil whether you're doing raised beds or whether you're doing little pots and containers this is a handy handy unit to have um, to move a little dirt out of the way and transplant and it's got this nice nylon sheath that you can put in and put on your belt loop a lot of people in the landscape and nursery industry love this tool right here and best of all it's made in the usa made in the usa and then We've got a lot of these, if, if you don't want a short handle version, a lot of these we have long handle versions of just like this. We call this a section hoe. And the reason we call it a section hoe is it's made out of a section of sickle bar. So that's what they call a sickle bar blade there. Which is used to cut hay with. And uh, I use this guy all the time to make little furrows for planting. Yep, got some decent weight to it. And that steel right there, that sickle mower is tough, hard. Uh, I doubt anybody would ever, it's pretty sharp. I doubt anybody would ever dull that just hand digging in soil. So, so if you're going to plant you a little row of peas or squash or whatever in your raised bed or in your garden, 
You can make a nice little one, two inch furrow with this guy right here and use it to cover it up. That, that's, that's a tough, tough tool there. And I ain't never had anybody call breaking one of these having any issues. And then the last one, which is similar, is actually made by the same folks that make these tools we give away. And this is probably one of our most popular short handle tools. And we've carried this one for a long time. And this is called the Hodag. And this is just a great general use tool. Um, it's great for light duty stuff like making a plant and furrow covering up. But, but these blades on here are pretty sharp and this you can hack at some pretty heavy stuff with this right here. I would I would say you could dig up a shrub with that if you needed to. Yeah, it's got two different sized blades on it, and both of them are sharp there. Again, this is high carbon steel. If you ever did need to sharpen it, you could. Now, all these tools that we have showed you today, every one of them is made in the USA. That's right. That's right. And we stand behind them, and if you ever have any issues... I can remember, <clears throat> of all these we showed you, I think we may have had one of these handles break that we warranted, and we've had one of the one of these other tools that we had to warranty one time. I can't never remember, but about, of all the ones we've sold, maybe two or three warranty issues with that, and we took care of that. Bam! Boom. Yeah, you don't have to send it back. We'll just send you another one. Yep. Just let us know. So um, we, we, we stand behind these satisfaction guaranteed so if you have any questions about those short handle tools or uh, need any suggestions as a gift or anything like that put that in the comments below if you have any short handle tools you really like uh, and want to send us a picture of them and we can see if we can source something like that do that as well we've got a few questions here from last week that we want to get into and uh, if we answer your question on the show send us an email to cussserve at hosttools.com with your address and we'll send you a nice little prize. Question number one comes from Randy Grammer. And Randy says, had our first mess of all top turnips. And for you don't know what a mess means, it means a gathering up that you're fixing to make a mess. Pop of. full. A pop full. Had our first mess of all top turnips greens tonight. They were great. What is the best way to store turnip greens? Since we are not pulling the roots, they seem to wilt within a few hours. Zone eight and direct seeding. Well, I didn't bring any with me, but let me walk down to Miss Hoss's garden real quick and I'll show you right. how we do it. Give me just a second. All right, Randy. So we're in Miss Hoss's raised bed garden and this is our all top turnips right here. Now, we don't have any of these ready to pick, so I can't really show you how we pick and store these because we just harvested them, ate some of them. We've got some collards over here, and I'll show you how we do the collards because we do the turnips the same way. All right, so we got some tiger collards here that need to be picked. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to crop these leaves off the bottom. Get me a handful. All right, once I got me a good little handful there, I'm going to take my knife, because we don't eat them stems anyway. I'm going to trim off them stems. I got my bag somewhere right here. Now, we use these bags you can get in a roll. Same ones you get in the grocery store. You can use any kind of bag, but these here are cheap and work real good. So we put our greens in here. We're going to tie us off knot right there and you gotta have a little airflow so we poke a few holes in them bags and that right there is stored in the fridge for usually at least a couple weeks so that's how we store them in these bags right here and i forgot to mention one thing you don't want to do is wash them then put them in the bag don't wash them until you are right ready to eat them so you can cut them, put them in the bag here, poke a few holes in them. It seems to be the thinner the bag. These little thin grocery store bags work better than a, a thicker Ziploc bag. But uh, don't wash them. Cut them, put them in a bag, 
and then wash them right before you eat them. All right, and our second question comes from Nathan Ho. And he says, what's the difference between insecticidal soap and horticultural oil, and which one would be better in the summer? Well, the, the natural difference there is one of them is the soap and one of them is the oil. The oils, the horticultural oils are heavier, and they work better on a wider array of insects. Horticultural oils are heavier, and they work better on some, they work real good on soft body insects, but some hard body insects such as scale, they will cover the shell on them and suffocate them. So they work good. However, they have a tendency to have some problems in hot weather. The insecticidal soaps work wonderful in hot weather. We used to use a lot of them and they work great only on soft body insects. Now, a lot of people, especially the old timers, talk about having lice on their turnip greens or mm -hmm. whatever. <clears throat> what they're talking about is aphids. Mm -hmm. Insecticidal soap works wonderful on aphids. And you, I don't, ever remember having a burn problem with insecticidal soap. Insecticidal soap can also be simply just Dawn dishwashing detergent or Lemon Joy. You can take that and make you a concoction, go out there and spray your greens or anything that you're having a problem with, with aphids on, and it'll take care of them. As long as you get it on them, it'll kill them, your soft body insects. Another little tidbit there that you may not know is if you got a wasp nest and you don't want to go to town what? to buy it, Wash, wash, but we say wash. We say washes. Y'all know what we're talking about. <laughs> things are to make you swell it when they bite you. If you got a washed nest and you want to kill it, but you don't want to have to go to town to buy you no wall spray. I ain't bought no wall spray in a long time. I go in there and get me a cup, put me some Dawn in there, mix me a little water in it, make me a concoction. You go out there and you throw it on them, boom, it'll kill them just that quick. So, insecticidal soap is a wonderful product. Spray it, you don't have any worries about heat on it. It don't have quite the, um, it don't have, it's not quite as broad spectrum as the horticulture oils. The horticulture oils work a lot better in cooler weather, and then the insecticidal soap work better in warm weather. All right. You don't spray hort oil when it's real hot outside. Nope. It'll burn your plants. All right. Well, thank y'all for those questions and put any other questions you have in the comments. We'll be glad to get to them. Look, one more final update. We are working on our new studio. I know we've been talking about that a while. We've had some visitors here that have seen it. Uh, they can tell you all about it, but we're getting close, close, close to having our new studio set up. We're going to have a nice little table in there. We can do more demonstrations. Uh, and we're really looking forward. Hopefully yep. we're in there by the end of the year. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you like this video, and we will see you next time.